phone calls, shopping, traffic. Nothing works without digital networks. Unfortunately, our systems are poorly equipped against hackers. How can you protect critical infrastructure against cyber attacks? That's our topic on Shift today. Hackers stealing data, installing malware, even shutting down entire cities. Hardly a day goes by without a cyber attack being reported somewhere in the world. Experts warn, critical infrastructure must be protected. What does that mean exactly? Traditionally, such critical infrastructure is built to run autonomously. Hospitals, for example, have emergency generators to maintain life support systems during a power outage. But in the last two decades, much of this infrastructure has been connected to the Internet. To function, they need access to servers, and these are located all over the world. It's an invisible network of digital systems that has developed over the years. Elements of critical infrastructure are connected, even across borders. This means individual components increasingly depend on one another. A wind farm in Germany is connected to US satellites, for example. If the satellites fail, the wind turbines come to a standstill. What's particularly alarming, critical infrastructure is not only threatened by individual cybercriminals. State institutions can also be behind the attacks. There were also cyber attacks during the first days of the war in Ukraine. Literally, as Russian tanks were rolling over the border into Ukraine, we also saw digital components to the attack, including an attack on a satellite network, one that's even used by wind turbines in Germany. Any disruption to these invisible digital connections can result in a domino effect. This can put the critical infrastructure of an entire society at risk. Cyber attacks usually don't make a grand entrance. They're more quiet and inconspicuous. A careless click in an email on a website can open a door to hackers. Companies and even government institutions can be affected. In the background, the intruders gain access to further servers in the network. Only once these hackers take over a large part of the digital structure, they strike openly. This is possible because the digital networks are so large and old methods of cybersecurity are no longer effective classic model would be almost like a castle with a moat. Everything inside would be precious and everything outside would be malicious. This is a model that doesn't work in the post-COVID age where we're all connecting from everywhere. The question is no more will an attacker get in because everyone knows an attacker will get in. You have to protect yourself finding out when someone gets in and the best case is finding it out very on, on a very early stage. But why do attackers seem to easily succeed in hacking networks? Almost every company now has cybersecurity experts, and they are constantly installing new antivirus software or firewalls. But even the best security measures fail again and again because of the same problem people. IT expert Sabine Kriebsch tells the story of the day when hackers shut down the systems in the administration she supervises. Sabine Griebsch is the chief digital officer in the county of Anhalt-Bitterfeld, an area between Berlin and Leipzig, home to around 160,000 people. In the summer of 2021, the county's administration fell victim to a cyber attack. It was early in the morning. At 6.30 a.m., the first call reached the IT department. Someone turned on their computer and said, nothing's working here right now. Files are encrypting. I was working from home and got a call. When I went in, we still assumed we have an attack now that will be solved in a very short time and that everything will be resolved within the next few days. But more calls started coming in. Employees from all over the district complained that their computers had stopped working. The IT expert team searched the system and came across a ransom note. They were addressing us personally. Someone had clearly spent time preparing this attack. That's when they knew this wasn't just another cyber attack. This time, it was really serious. When the computer of the IT administrator with all of the rights encrypted itself, 
That's when we knew we had a problem. The hackers were part of a group called Pay or Grief. They demanded 500,000 euros as a ransom, paid in the cryptocurrency Monero. The IT manager at the time, Oliver Rumpf, explains why the district decided not to pay. We had to ask ourselves, OK, if we pay the ransom now, will we really get the key then? Plus, we knew they had been in our system. Who's to say they didn't put some back doors to attack us again and encrypt again? But how did the hackers get into the system? In the Bitterfat example, it is no longer possible to fully find out. Because whether it's the road traffic authority or the registry office, people everywhere work with network computing systems. To gain access without anyone noticing, there are various tricks and methods. At the beginning of a cyber attack, intruders try to gain access to the computer network. They use various methods. Currently, so-called phishing emails are the most successful trick to access systems. One click on a supposedly secure attachment or link will install malware on a computer. Intruders can then steal passwords and access codes. Often, they disguise themselves as trusted contacts and lure people into revealing their login data. This type of credential theft relies on other people's good faith. Poorly secured servers that haven't been updated with the latest security updates can be an easy way into the network for hackers. Once inside, the intruders can spend weeks or even months looking for important information. They look for data so valuable that people would pay money to get it back. When they find what they're looking for, they encrypt the data and send a message to their victims offering a decryption key in return for a ransom. Victims are left with two options, to pay up and trust that they get their data back, or to refuse and hope that they can recover some of the hijacked data. And that's not all. The hackers often threaten with double extortion. They don't only encrypt the data of their victims, but also publish sensitive information on the dark web if no ransom is paid. At the end of 2022, sensitive data from a major Australian health insurance company ended up on the dark web. Personal information was released about policyholders who were treated for substance abuse, STDs or abortions. The hackers wanted to pressure the insurance company to pay. Poorly secured servers of large companies can become a threat to individual customers. And this wasn't an isolated case, says cybersecurity analyst Karen Elazari. It's a booming industry, and it's an industry that has managers, planners, developers, criminal groups took advantage of the COVID pandemic and the changes to all of our lives to attack healthcare institutions, public institutions, local authorities. Critical infrastructure around the world is at the mercy of these cyber attacks. And hackers look for the targets where they expect the greatest profit, mostly in North America and Western Europe. But also other regions are hit by these well-coordinated attacks. In 2019, attackers broke into the network of India's largest nuclear power station. In 2021, an attack on a pipeline provider led to panic buying and gas shortages in the U.S. And in 2022, hackers paralyzed the computer systems of the government of Costa Rica. Each of these incidents had impact locally in the country or the region where it happened. However, should an adversary, a cyber attack group, decide to launch several attacks at the same time, simultaneously, in many different countries around the world, the impact to that would be potentially devastating. Can a cyber attack actually shut down an entire nation? As a result of digitization in recent years, some parts of infrastructure have undergone massive changes. And many things can no longer be done without digital systems. Now back to our case from Germany. How exactly did the attack impact the critical infrastructure? What you don't see from the outside is that the software of the offices is connected within our IT infrastructure. Nothing works anymore. No cash register software, no alarm system. In the small county in the middle of Germany, the public infrastructure failed completely. 
all authorities responsible for around 160,000 people had to close, the citizens were worried. Of course, people wonder, can the office still pay out welfare, alimony, or benefits for the elderly? Only very slowly did it become clear what impact the cyber attack had on both the population and the administration. We've lost all emails from the last 20 years. They're all gone and we'll never get them back. How do I explain that to my colleagues and employees? Sorry, everything's gone. Because many use their email system as a filing system and an archive system to store all the emails there. The situation was so messy that the district declared a state of emergency. That normally only happens during natural disasters like huge floods, but not because of a cyber attack. That way, the armed forces could send their cyber experts to help the authorities regain control of the network. That really helped us, because at the time, our IT team did not have enough manpower. It still took weeks until the authorities were slowly operating again. This had a massive impact on the people in the region. The full car dealership, for example, couldn't register any new vehicles for a period of four weeks as the authorities in question weren't able to work. And without license plates, cars couldn't be delivered to new owners. Sales came to a halt, a bitter loss for the company. In that quarter, we made a loss of approximately 750,000 euros. All in all, it took the county about a year to repair all the systems, not to mention the financial damage. The threat of cybercrime is growing. That's why we need to know more about everything that's interconnected in our society. Have you ever been affected by a cyber attack? Let us know on YouTube or DW.com. That's it from me today. See you again next time. Bye.